Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today we're gonna to be looking at Hops and Barley from Yoku Playing Cards. The Yoku is the creation of Italians Anthony Holt and Alessandra Gagliano. Alessandra does all of the artwork for the decks and the pair, while still relatively new to playing cards, has produced a couple of phenomenal decks overall. Uh, last year, they actually had their first deck with Fila Day. They followed that up with the Green Man. And if you saw the reviews on my channel, you know that I was absolutely obsessed with the beautiful mythology and artwork that they expressed within the decks. Uh, so I knew I had to pick it up when they uh, launched the Kickstarter for their third deck, Hops and Barley. Now, this deck's a little bit different. It doesn't go into mythology, but instead is meant to kind of feature some elements of a more standard deck, if you will. Now, if you've seen Anthony and Alessandra's designs, you know that there's going to be nothing standard or boring about the artwork within this, but the court cards are a lot more familiar, a lot less ultra highly customized, uh, making this a much more standard and usable deck. Uh, but we'll get more into that as we go. Let's start out by uh, in looking at these decks. All right, starting with the theme. Obviously, with hops and barley, the theme is going to be beer. Hops and barley are two of the ingredients that you find in pretty much every beer that's out there. Uh, and the deck comes in three different versions. You have the Deep Amber Ale, the Pale Gold Pilsner, and the Piece de Resistance, the Brewer's Reserve. Now, we're going to take a look at all three of these in turn, but we're going to start out really pouring into the first of the two standard tucks with the Deep Amber Ale. Now, one of the really fascinating parts of this uh, is the material that's used for the tuck case. When I zoom in here, you'll see this really nice matte finish with little specks in it overall. Uh, the tuck case is actually made from a paper sourced in Germany uh, that, is that is made out of recycled uh, beer byproducts. Basically, once they're done making the beer, some of that yeast and barley, et cetera, that's left over, they use that, recycle it to make these tucks. So I love the environmental aspect, but it also produces just a fantastic looking paper. Those imperfections on there are almost like a fingerprint. Each deck is gonna look a little bit different. And I think that really just provides some uniqueness and authenticity overall to the tuck case. Uh, now the design on it is printed in this sort of cream colored foil, kind of a white foil. You have obviously the name of the deck, Hops and Barley by Yoku Playing Cards. And then a few large copper stills featured on there. Copper stills used in the production of beer. Uh, so you get a trio of them standing there. And then lots of the botanicals, obviously hops and barley that are featured all the way throughout. So you'll see a couple of stalks of hops at the bottom or the barley kind of twisting its way around. Uh, beautiful design. Uh, I love that it's not like a super shiny foil, but just gives it a nice vintage feel to it overall. Finishes out with a kind of dots and lines forming a border around the tops and the bottom. And you have this, that kind of looks like a beer cap in the corners as well. Uh, on the sides, you've got hops and barley. You can really see that paper well there. Other side, made in Europe. So the cards are printed by Cardamundi. The tucks are made in Italy. Uh, with paper sourced from Germany, and then the whole package was actually put together by Anthony and Alessandra back in Italy. Now, so when they say made in Europe, it really was made all over Europe. And the bottom has some ad copy for Yoku, uh, mentions the tuck boxes made in Italy, and the cards printed by Cardamundi in Belgium. Uh, there at the top, you get the name of the deck again, along with a little bit of uh, extra copy there, including mentioning these are done on Cardamundi's B9 linen finish, the slimline stock. Uh, the back has a foiled and embossed version of the back of the cards. We'll look more at those details in a second. And as you open up the inner flap, website for Yoku there, www.yoku.cards. And then some extra little elements, a bottle cap from a beer there on the, on the inner flaps. And you get some nice foiled printing on the interior as well. So very nice all the way down, just kind of a random looking pattern all the way down the top. Uh, so that is the tuck case. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And putting it side by side with the second version, we'll take a quick look at that one. Uh, here's the pale gold Pilsner. A lot of the same design elements, in fact, pretty much identical designs overall, but you get a different color to that tuck case. And again, you'll see those nice specks and imperfections all the way down, but now a much more yellow tuck case. 
so very interesting. The foil is still a great contact, contrast in both colors, but otherwise pretty much identical inside and out. Uh, so those are the two tuck cases uh, for you to take a look at. So really fantastically done. But now let's get into the cards. We'll look at the two backs side by side. Uh, they are identical in design, but obviously different in color. Uh, one of them features that kind of brownish red color. The other one features a much more yellow color, uh, both meant to mimic different colors of beer. So obviously you can get some like darker beers that can be anywhere from brown to sort of red, and then all sorts of shades of gold or yellow for much lighter beers. Uh, so those are featured pretty prominently. Uh, looking at the car design, the most prominent feature is gonna be that copper still, which makes its way front and center. Uh, Anthony and Alessandro were inspired in part uh, by going to see where a uh, Hefeweizen factory and seeing the large copper still that they had on display there. Uh, just a magnificent look to it. And that sort of became an inspiration for some of those design elements. Now looking around, you see a lot more beer inspired touches, including the little uh, beer tap that's extending out of the side and filling up a glass at the bottom. One of the nice things that you'll see as we go through the deck is they feature a lot of different pieces of specific beer glassware. So beer isn't just always served in a regular pint glass, there's all sorts of different glasses that you can use for the beer. This particular one's a, I believe called a tulip glass. Uh, and all of the different uh, glasses, their shapes are specifically crafted to maybe emphasize or highlight different parts of the beer. Um, so specific types of beer go in specific glasses. Uh, this particular one, for example, it's got that stem at the bottom so you can hold it in your hand, won't warm the glass of beer. Uh, so people get very finicky about how they serve and drink their beer sometimes. Uh, now surrounding it, you have more, of course, hops and barley that make an appearance in different parts of the deck. And then a really ornate pattern with just sort of scroll work going all the way around and finishing in that thin white poker border. So very nice back designs to the cards. Uh, but now let's look at the deck itself. We're gonna start with the uh, Amber Ale version of it, the Dark Amber Ale. Uh, so, extra cards that you get. You get a pair of Jokers, and here they are. Feature another type of beer glass. This one's just a regular pint glass. Actually, it's a European pint glass. You can tell because it's a little bulge on the side. Uh, but has one in full color with that amber beer, and then some little pops of color with the yellow and the barley and then one in black and white. So it just features a pint glass sitting in sort of a bed of hops and barley. That's Joker Joker in the corners. So there's your two Jokers. You also get a duplicate Ace of Spades. Uh, now it's not quite an exact duplicate. One Ace is done in color. I'm gonna call this the standard Ace and then the duplicate one is done in black and white. So really beautiful. Uh, both, of the, both of the Aces feature uh, glass in the center and they picked of course with this being the dark amber ale deck uh, picked the right kind of glass to be used for ale uh, so would expect nothing less of them uh, and then it's uh, kind of sitting in the middle of this large spade pip that's ornamented with hops and barley all the way around little pops of color from the yellow with that barley and then almost a garland or wreath of uh, hops around the edge uh, the banners at the bottom have the name of the deck as well as mentioning this is of course the dark amber ale version and yoku playing cards uh, fairly nice recognizable and readable pip and index in the corner but you do get a custom pip that we'll look at in a second and there's the second ace with the black and white uh, so there's your extra cards uh, now getting into the rest of the deck the number cards all fairly standard obviously you get that slight customization with the shaded half of the pips on the number cards but nice familiar easy to read nothing too out of the ordinary on these then you get to the court cards so i mentioned before that uh, yoku wanted to produce basically a standard deck of cards and these are what they're calling their new standard courts while they may iterate on these a little bit they want these to become the foundational courts of maybe a bunch of different more standard decks they're not going to depart from the mythologically inspired and super highly customized courts but they're going to mix it up with some decks that go after a theme and maybe experiment in other areas but then use their standard court so they're definitely familiar if you've ever seen a regular bicycle deck of cards very familiar layout and overall design 
but they're definitely still custom. Uh, those faces, it's hard to describe, but if you've seen some of the other Yoku decks, you'll recognize the art style of the faces right away. And then the colors of the of the clothing here, all done inspired by the two colors of the decks with that gold or yellowish gold color and then that deep amber color. Uh, so all inspired by the color of the two standard versions. And the rest of the courts kind of follow suit. You'll notice that each of the queens, instead of a flower, is holding uh, something that maybe is used in beer production. So an ear of corn, for example, in the Queen of Diamonds, or I skip past the Queen of Spades here, but she's holding barley in her hand. Red cards, more of the same, just a deep, almost maroon color to these. And then through the clubs, and then there's your club court cards, this time holding what I believe is wheat in her hands. And then into the hearts where she has the barley in her hands. And finishing with the ace of hearts. Now turning to the gold version of the deck, uh, the pale gold, uh, pale gold pilsner, uh, more of the same. This time the aces feature a pilsner glass in the center, that long, uh, that very tall, skinny glass, a pilsner glass. Uh, very fitting, of course, uh, for a Pilsner deck, uh, but otherwise very similar design all the way through. Uh, the court cards are also slightly changed. So they look similar, but the colors are all basically inverted. Let me see if I can show two of these side by side so you can see what I mean. Let me grab the Jack of Spades out of this one. Uh, so they look very similar, but this one over here is the amber version of the deck. This is the pale gold Pilsner. And you'll see same design, just inverted colors. So red becomes yellow, yellow becomes, or amber becomes yellow, yellow becomes amber as you go through the two versions. Uh, so otherwise, pretty much the same design as we look through the yellow version of the deck uh, on all the cards. Same basic shape, just the colors inverted. And so there's your club courts and your heart courts all the way through. And then you finish with the jokers, this time featuring a uh, uh, mug of ale there in the center, or mug, uh, just a regular beer mug in the center. And again, sitting on that bed of hops and barley. Uh, so there's the two standard versions of the deck. Now, as far as handling, they're printed by Cardamundi on that slimline stock. One of my favorite stocks out there, and it just handles beautifully. Fans super smooth out of the box. Uh, that be that uh, uh, stock that they use very very durable despite being very thin and snappy. Uh, so this is probably my favorite stock and finish on any deck. Uh, I think they did a great job. I love that they picked that out. Uh, so no complaints whatsoever on the handling, cuts, fans, everything. Going to be great for that. Uh, but that is only two of the decks. We have one more to go, and it is the most desirable and limited of the three with the Brewers Reserve deck. Now, I don't think this necessarily shows up as well on camera as it does in person, but it is a fantastic and beautiful tuck case. Uh, the material now is done in this sort of deep brown color, and the specs and imperfections show up phenomenally well in this one. Uh, almost looks kind of washed out on camera, but if I shade it here, you can see how fantastically that copper foil that they use on this one uh, really shines against that dark background really beautifully done. The front of the tuck is also kind of modified slightly. Uh, so very similar, hops and barley at the top. This one of course mentions it's the Brewer's Reserve and limited edition. These are printed to just a thousand. Uh, but in addition to the color, the design down here at the bottom is slightly changed. So whereas this one featured three smaller copper stills, this one pulls that copper still front and center, putting one large copper still uh, surrounded by hops and barley all the way around. Uh, copper stills are really uh, the more traditional material that's used in these stills. Today they use a lot more stainless steel, but copper is thought to be, because of heat transfer and a few other factors, thought to be the better and the superior uh, material to use for producing beer. So it produces better tasting beer, uh, even if it's more expensive or harder to clean than the stainless steel ones that are more commonly used. Uh, those that much more much simpler border is now replaced by a more ornate border with lots of leaf and vine work, uh, presumably sort of hops to, uh, draped around the edges of the tuck. 
Otherwise, rest of the duct, pretty much the same. Obviously, the copper foil is going to shine everywhere you turn, uh, except on the bottom uh, where the ad copy was. This one also includes a hand numbering, so it's 13 out of 1,000 is the number that I got. Uh, so fantastic. I love this tuck case. Can't say enough good things about it. It's just great overall. Now, getting to the cards. You notice one extra card that slipped into this one that wasn't in the others, and that's the Certificate of Authenticity. Printed on a white card with just the copper Yoku logo on the back, and tells you a load about the story of the deck. Has a numbering here that naturally matches the one that we just looked at on the tuck case, and a note from Anthony and Alessandra. It's a really nice touch. I like this being added into the tuck as well. Uh, now, the back design of the cards, though, this is a highlight for sure. Uh, it's done with a black background and copper foil all the way throughout. Uh, so no white at all on this deck, including that border, which is all done in copper as well. So it's edge to edge printing of copper foil. Same design overall, but with that black background and the bright copper, uh, just shines so beautifully in the light. Um, just a very luxurious feel to these card backs. I uh, love that one. Uh, the extra cards or the, the, the deck itself, uh, most of it uh, has a very similar design, but there are going to be some differences on this one. Uh, so on the Ace of Spades, the glassware is now switched out with a tulip glass. Uh, this is actually the same one that's featured on the back design of the cards. Uh, so same glass there. Uh, that makes its way onto the front. And you get the label at the bottom for Brewer's Reserve uh, with the stacked barrels now forming the background with that uh, spade pip in the back. Uh, interestingly, the other Ace of Spades is just a standard one. So rather than getting those two identical, but one with color uh, versions of the Ace of Spades, we have now just a really almost boring, plain Ace of Spades. Uh, interesting choice, not my favorite of the choices this one. I wish they'd gone with the ornate Ace of Spades on both of them, but uh, I don't know, I guess they wanted to keep it, maybe uh, give it more of a classic feel. Uh, and then the court cards are also gonna be different on these. Uh, same design, but now they're done with, instead of that yellow and red, they're done with much darker hues and feature gold metallic inks. Look how well those shine. Uh, so it gives it a much more vintage feel to them overall. Uh, great look to the court cards. Love those. And then the jokers are changed out as well. Uh, this time featuring a goblet in the center. That's that type of glass there. Uh, sitting again was surrounded by hops and barley. You have the large barrel in the back and one of them features the barley uh, accented with bits of copper foil. Love the shine on that. Or copper metallic ink, I should say. Uh, so those are just some of the differences. Uh, now, these are just like the standard decks printed on that uh, slimline, uh, slimline stock with the B9 finish. So they're gonna handle just as well, even with the foiling. Uh, Cardamundi, in my opinion, if you're going to have a foil deck, there is nobody better than Cardamundi to do phenomenal detail work with the foiling while at the same time maintaining beautiful handling. So love that they went with Cardamundi for the foiling as well. Uh, so that's it. That is the look at Hops and Barley. Hope you enjoy this look at all three decks. Definitely one worth checking out. Well, I'm not sure how readily available the Hops, uh, the Brewer's Reserve versions are, I still recommend checking out all three versions. It's a fantastic deck, one that would be great for gameplay with the much more standard quartz, uh, but also one that would just be fantastic in any collection. So hope you enjoyed the look at Hops and Barley by Yoku Playing Cards. I'll put a link down in the description where you can go buy some for yourself if you like what you see. And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more deck reviews and unboxings. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.